Hey everybody, it's Stacy Duffy here, your Denver Metro Real Estate Resource. And I am at a vacant property. We just finished up the inspection for a potential rental house. And so for myself. And so I wanted to let y'all know during an inspection for a rental property, other than the obvious stuff, right? And I'm sorry if it echoes because it's vacant and I use my microphone and it's tile. So um, other than the obvious things to look for during an inspection, right? So I'm sure I've done a video and I'll link to it up above and down below on um, what to look for during an inspection. And if for some reason I haven't, I'll definitely make one soon. <laughs> but for a rental property, like everybody has different things they like as far as being an investor, right? So for my situation, currently what I'm looking for is something that is very, very good condition, but is dated, right? Because I can buy appliances, I can paint cabinets, I can change counters, I can add a breakfast bar, <laughs> like I can do all those things, but I want something that I can update and rent, right? So I want good condition. I don't want to put money in furnace and AC and windows and siding and roof and all these things that I don't get a really good ROI out of right off the bat. If I need to do that over the long term and I plan on keeping the property, great. I don't mind doing it. But so obviously during the inspection looking, you know, and I still hire an inspector for my investor properties, at least at the moment, right? Because I don't do crawl spaces, attics, roofs <laughs> or sewers. <laughs> so I'm still going to hire an inspector to go take a look at those things. Um, because one, I want the visibility to those items that maybe I don't want to crawl around in those areas or can't get to very easily um, or can't get to safely. And if nothing else, then it gives me perspective. And then I have pictures and I can look at that and evaluate. So what I'm doing during an inspection, while the inspector's looking at all that stuff, what I'm looking for is I am writing down, what do I need to buy? Because what I want to do is I want to limit the time that my property is not available and not rented, right? Because that costs me money because now I'm paying for a house and nobody's living in it. So I want to limit that time. So what I can do during the inspection is I can write down all of the stuff that I need to have ready to go so that once I own the property and have access to it, um, legally, I can make those updates. Um, how much, what do I need to have painted? What color do I want it to have painted? Um, how many outlets do I need to replace? Switches, outlet covers, GFCIs, light fixtures, vanity bathroom fixtures, countertops, flooring. Um, are we doing, you know, are we replacing a stair rail hand handle or something that would need to be ordered? Um, like in this house, you can't see it right here, but you know, I've got brass knobs and brass hinges and I'm like, okay, cool. Let's go ahead and do that because I'm going to have the house painted and it'll really update to replace a lot of those. Um, light fixtures, chandeliers, you can't see any in my view and I'm resting it on the cabinet door. So if I touch it, it's going to fall <laughs> on my phone. So I don't want to mess with that and show y'all a whole bunch of stuff. But those are the things that I'm looking at and taking account during the inspection. How many fans do I need to buy? Do I need to buy some with remotes or do we already have a setup where like in this house, there's two bedrooms that only have one switch for the overhead fixture. Um, and then the master bedroom has three switches. So it has a switched outlet and it has a fan switch and a light switch. The other two bedrooms don't have that. So that tells me what kind of fans I need to buy. If I need to buy remote fans, if I want to do a wall remote setup, um, Porch lights, for great example, like these have the light photo eye sensor bulbs in the outdoor fixtures. So, and then they have the tape just like, or uh, the switch for that front porch lights. They have them like taped up. So I'm thinking, okay, I can either hardwire that where it's on all the time and leave the photo eyes if they don't work really well and I'm gonna replace the fixtures anyway, but I don't wanna deal with photo eye bulbs, then maybe I do a different type of smart switch or other option that will have those turn on at night and not during the day or, Am I going to replace those fixtures anyway? Is it going to matter? So that's what I'm taking count of is what do I need to replace right away and or fix? Um, what do I want to upgrade? How many of those do I need? Do I need single switches? Do I need three-way switches? Um, do I need double wall, like double gang plates, which I know you can't see in there, but like over here, I've got, okay, I'm going to need, if I'm going to replace outlets and switches, then... Um, then I need a single switch and I need a decor outlet and then I need a double plate for those. And that's the nice part about decor switches is it doesn't matter, right? You don't have to have a switch and outlet combo plate for these. You do. 
So those are all the things I'm taking count of because I don't have that later. If I don't have access to the property again, or it costs me more time and more money and whatever to, to have a handyman come over and take those counts when I can literally buy all that, have it at the house ready for them to go and have them swap it out. It saves me a lot of time. It saves them time. It saves me money. So those are the things that I'm looking for. Um, in this particular house, there's shutters, right? I don't think you can see them in any picture. Oh yeah, back here. Um, there's really nice shutters. I like those. I hope my tenants don't tear them up. Um, but a lot of times with those sweater, the shutters, the little magnet connections, if they're plastic and they get brittle and it's a sunny side, they're going to snap and break. Right? So I had on my list to go buy those. And then lo and behold, I look in the kitchen cabinet and somebody else, somebody else already did. <laughs> so I'm like, cool. Just need to bank for the time to put those on and put that on my handyman list of things to do. Um, the fact that I don't need to, to buy another set of those, that's cool. So those are all of the things doorknobs. Um, so the doorknobs and hinges I mentioned, let me look on here, um, which shand, which when I go to do light fixtures, cause I'm a big fan of doing light fixtures. So I'll put a link to a video up above and down below for the best, like bang for your buck improvements. And I also have another video of things I've done on my other rental property, just to show you examples of those. Um, but light fixtures. So it's really cool. And then you're like, you can look back at the listing photos. Sometimes maybe the property you're buying doesn't have photos or it doesn't have good photos or you don't have photos of all the rooms. So if you, you know, do a video walkthrough at least <laughs> on your phone of your properties at your inspection too, because that's an easy way for you to refer back to it. And you can stop and pause the video and count outlets and do those things. So that way, if you miss it during your inspection window and you're like, crap, I didn't write out how many double gang wall plates I need versus single gang wall plates. Fine, I'll buy a box for my contractor. It's cheap. I know that's enough. Cool. If you want to do them individually, look at your video. You can always refer back to that. So shoot a, just on your phone, a little walkthrough video narrating what's in the room, like making sure you're scanning the room, pointing out the outlets, you see the light fixture. Because when I'm shopping for light fixtures, I need to know how many are recessed, how many are flush mount, how many are chandelier. If it's a chandelier one, am I going from a vaulted ceiling or am I going from an eight foot ceiling? Or am I going from a nine or 10 foot raised ceiling? And if it's a newer house and has higher ceilings, how big of a fixture do I want there on the flush mounts? Is it a 12 inch fixture that's there right now or a 15 inch? Because if I buy a 12 inch from Costco and I put it up and I'm not painting the ceiling, you're going to see the paint ring where they painted the last time. So all of those little things, those are what kill you and kill time when you're doing it after you close. Okay. Those are the things that like, you know, the handyman came over to do the light, but the light that you bought him wasn't big enough. And so we had to go to Home Depot and then it ends up taking like two days when it's something that should have taken an hour. So reducing my time off the market, as far as off the market for a potential tenant, reducing my reno time, do, making my list. So I already know what to buy. I don't have to do it later. If I have to be here for an inspection anyway, and I'm using that time, I might as well use the time to get my shopping list done of all the stuff I need to buy, right? Um, so then I'm, you know, what finish do I want? Am I making sure that like, Hey, am I going to do a kitchen faucet now? Or am I going to do my kitchen reno later? So if I'm going to do doing my kitchen reno later, then do, am I doing appliances now? Cause if I'm doing appliances, I need to measure where those appliances are going to go, especially for fridges and stoves and make sure your standard, your dishwasher is a standard size and not like a mini dishwasher or something. So those are all the things that will just kill you and nickel and dime your time to death down the road. So that's what I'm doing at the inspection. Um, and the video walkthrough, I haven't done yet. So I need, to, after I shoot this, I'm going to do a quick video walkthrough on my phone. So I have that for reference later um, in case I forget something. Um, air registers. So like HVAC vent register covers. A lot of times if you're buying a house, it's kind of been worn and torn and needs some fixing or you want to change and update flooring and things like that, you'll need to buy new floor registers. So this house, they're great condition. They're in great shape. I don't need to touch any of those. So that's not even on my list. Um, but how many of those, what size do you need? Return registers. If they're super grungy, it's not worth cleaning. Go buy a new one for 10 or 15 bucks or hit up buds or restore. If you're going to be going there anyway, um, for, you know, the build, those building materials, a lot of times they have those. So, but just having that comprehensive list of all these little things you need to buy, because as you think of them, or you'll do everything later and you're like, oh, dang, now I should do this or now I should do this. So that's why at your inspection, it's a really good time to kind of set your budget and say, okay, here's what I plan on doing. Here's, sorry, there's a door chime outside and it's like, or like a wind chime. And I'm not used to hearing that because I don't have one of those and kind of drive me nuts. Um, so those are the things like, if I can knock all those out now, it saves me a lot of time later. Um, the other thing I do here, I'll open my bag for y'all. Um, is measure flooring. So if the listing 
has a detailed floor plan with measurements, save it, okay? <laughs> Download it, save it, get all those measurements. The measurements that the agent puts in the MLS might be rounded up or rounded down because a lot of times the MLS does not allow us, or at least in certain areas, your MLS may be different depending on the system. It may not allow them to put the exact inches measurement. And depending on how the house is laid out, the hallway not may not be a perfect rectangle, you know, all that kind of stuff. So um, if you have a floor plan, that's coming with it with measurements, great. If not, I'm gonna pay my professional photographer to come in here and just do a floor plan for me because I know what that costs and I know what it helps for me to budget the costs of flooring, to already know what the room sizes are, um, to have all that information. And then I have a floor plan, one, to market my property with to my potential tenants so they know the layout of the house. And then two, to do any budgeting for replacement of flooring, I can give that to contractors to say, hey, here's how the house is laid out. And I can mark things on the floor plan, replace these outlets, replace the lights in this room, this room, this room, this room. Like giving them a diagram really helps. So I'm gonna have that done, but until I have that done, I want to have measurements on how big the rooms are. I love the little laser measure. This I've had this guy forever. They're cheaper now than they used to be. And they're really cool if you Bluetooth them and hook up to your phone and all this fancy crap. Um, I'm just lazy. I don't like using measuring tape because I'm just trying to get ballpark of roughly how big are my rooms for flooring. And then I'll get the detail measurements off my floor plan. But that way I know that, okay, if my tile floor cuts off at a certain spot halfway through the room, like it does in this house, then how much carpet do I have in this room that I need to budget to have replaced? So when I go to my carpet place and say, hey, I need this much carpet, I've already got a solid number and I'm not just using the MLS, you know, listing information of, oh, the house is 1,555 square feet above ground or whatever it may be, like 17, I don't know, whatever, right? Because... If there's stairs, I need to count how many steps because that affects my carpet quote. So if part of those areas are tile, then that affects my quote. If part of those areas I wanna change to LVP or LVT, then I wanna know how big those rooms are so I know how much of that flooring I need because that flooring costs different than what my other flooring does. So all of those things that like when you go shopping that you're like, yeah, you know, just imagine if you, cause a lot of this is really gonna be for first time, second time investors, right? Because those are the people that are probably watching this video of like, yeah, what should I look for? So I'm not wasting my time because seasoned investors know this stuff, right? They know what to look for. They know to have, you know, who to have come in here and grab their stuff and get their accounts and get it done. Um, for the casual investors or the, you know, hey, I have one, two, three rental properties, something like that, or I want to get started with it. These are the things you don't know and you learn the hard way because you're at Home Depot or Costco or wherever you're ordering your lights from or Amazon or something. And you're like, crap, how many of those do I really need? Because the last thing you wanna do is stop and have to go back to the store to get something that costs a dollar. <laughs> Nonetheless, to pay your handyman or your electrician or your plumber or somebody else to do that because you're paying their rates. <laughs> and chances are like everybody's time is worth more than $15 an hour because minimum wage is worth more than that. So unless you have like a 16 year old kid with nothing better to do and you wanna pay him to go run to the store, cool. The gas costs more than that, okay? So that's why I'm a fan of like switches and outlets and plate covers, whatever it is, I round up to the Nerex 10. And then if it's like nine or 10 on the dot, I add another box because if those come in a 10 contractor pack from the store, it's cheaper for me to buy another box depending on what the item is than it is to go back to the store to get another one. Um, and what your time is worth and what the gas to go to the store is worth is, you know, you have to consider that. So. Anyway, those are just the things that I'm personally looking for when I'm looking at a rental property, how many GFCIs I need versus how many regular switches versus how many three-way switches, how many lights, what chandeliers, what finish I want to go with, um, how many hinges, how many doorknobs, what flooring, how much flooring, where the flooring transitions are so I know how many transition strips to get of what type of flooring, all of those types of things. And then I do the video walkthrough so I have that for reference later just in case I miss something, because the last thing I want to do is waste more time because I forgot to look at something. Okay. So anyway, if you are looking to purchase your first or second investment property, I've had multiple clients do this. Um, and it's really kind of changed their trajectory <laughs> um, of their lifestyle, right? Of their financial position down the road. Because when you, if you're on the fence about, you know, buying a rental, not buying a rental, keeping the house or renting it out or something, there are some people I've said, guys, you're, you know, based on what you're telling me, and what your goals are, I don't think keeping it as a rental is a good idea. You should sell it or other people that I'm like, they come to me to sell it. And I was like, yeah, I can sell it for you. Don't get me wrong. That's great. That's how I make a living. But why would you not rent it and make more money? Like that's smarter. If I were you, that's what I would do. So anyway, feel free to reach out to me. I love my job. I love this part of my job. I get really passionate about it. Like that's why I said this, this is for us, for my husband and I. Um, 
So, and I have some other plans for it too in the future. So anyway, feel free to reach out. I've got my phone number and contact information down below. It's also on my website. Hit me up. If you're looking to buy or sell just in general in the Denver metro area, I would love to help. Please feel free to reach out to me. There's a lot of things I'm looking at that I'm going to make sure I don't spend my time and money on an inspection um, and tie up my earnest money for a property that's probably not going to work out. So if there's anything that I can see, I'm going to let you know at a showing versus waiting to get to an inspection and waste your money. Um, and there was really nothing here. There was some sewer stuff that came up that I wasn't expecting because I can't see in the sewer, which is why even on a newer home, I still have the sewer inspected because it's cheap to find out what it looks like. And there's some, there's some repairs there. I don't think it's going to be a deal killer for us. We'll have to see how it goes um, and how we negotiate it out. So obviously I'll post this after everything is done and finished up if this works out. But anyway, other than that, there's really nothing, you know, and in the crawl space, there was like, hey, there's an issue here. You probably should know about it. We look outside. We're like, ah, okay, we know what that is. Cool. We'll put it on our list to do right away, right? So that goes on to my shopping list if that I need some gutter extensions and whatever else I need. So let me know. I love doing this. I love to help clients. Feel free to reach out. And anyway, hopefully this was helpful for y'all. If it was, hit the like button, help other people find it. I know it's me and rambly and ranty and all that stuff that I do. But if you got a nugget out of this or you're like, damn, that's a good idea. I should have thought of that or cool. Glad I watched this. Hit the like button. That helps other people find this too. So anyway, thanks so much for the time and y'all have a good one.